Hi guys! Today we're going to take another look at fashion flats and we're going to do it in a way that's a little bit more traditional than our first uh, assignment which was the polo assignment. Uh, they're going to be done in black and white which they typically are um, and they're going to emphasize the construction details of the garment. Um, flats of course, uh, let's take a look at some just to begin uh, with. I'm going to maybe do a little bit of suits. Um, So we'll see what sort of uh, sort of just in a little overview. So here's a nice example. Excuse my internet. But fashion flats are really, really important. Um, they are uh, the skill to be able to make them uh, accurately, quickly, and attractively. Um, is almost required for nearly every entry-level job into the fashion industry. It's actually much more important than your design sketches um, because flats are how the garment gets made. Uh, you can actually forego the design sketch and only make a flat and your garment can still get made. Um, however, the same is not true in reverse um, because the flat uh, details all of the construction details and are utilized as this sort of liaison between the designer and the production team. Now these are some pretty good flats. Um, they're not the best. I'm already seeing they're drawn very nicely. Okay. Um, let me tell you already what's wrong with them. The zipper is wrong. We wouldn't put a zipper in without the seam coming down to the hem. Um, these sleeves shouldn't be so close. They should be set out like this so we can see the full shape of the sleeve and the full shape of the bodice without them sort of colliding. Uh, the way we have it here, um, the sleeve is hiding the shape of the garment, the bodice part, um, which is not good. So um, these are drawn well, um, technically they're not the best. But let's scroll through and you can get the sort of idea. So um, here's looks like rather good one. Um, this seems okay. Uh, typically we always have jackets and things like that buttoned. And we wouldn't have this all tied and cinched again so we could better see the shape. Don't be confused by it. There's a lot of bad flats out there, too. <laughs> Let's see what this one looks like. This one looks pretty good. The crotch depth on this seems a bit too long. I mean, I don't know how far it comes up on her, but it's rather long. As you can see, proportionately, this chunk this rise is the same. It goes sort of down to here. So that would be from here to here. So that means it's going all the way up here. So proportion is important. So uh, these look like they're, they're drawn fairly well. I'm also a little weirded out why it has a sort of standard pant front but no yoke or darts in the back. That would be wrong if this looks like it should be knit. If it's knit, it probably wouldn't have a fly. In any case, I'm not going to focus too much on construction. It can get overwhelming. Um, and we're definitely, once you get into FD12, um, it's going to focus a lot more on the construction aspects, uh, whether you're creating constructionally accurate um, flats. However, I am going to put a handout in the this week's course content that's a brief overview on how to create uh, flats with accurate construction. So please do look over it um, and refer to it when you do your flats. Um, I'm not going to mark off too much for construction problems, 
Um, however, I am I am going to mark off a little bit um, again because I want to focus more on the technique of the drawing of the flats than on the construction um, for you know this class. But of course, it's important, and it's important because that's the sole purpose of our flats um, is to express accurate construction. Um, if the flat doesn't have accurate construction, um, then it's no good. Uh, it's better to have a poorly drawn flat with ac accurate construction than something gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous that can't be made. It's another nice one. So you're getting the idea. So another thing that um, is important is that all flats should have a back and a front like this. Now these look quite nice. These look like very good um, so long as this is knit. Let's assume it is knit. Um, fair, fairly accurate. Um, I feel like on the back we're hiding a lot of details. Like, look, you can barely even see that little detail there. But if we had the sleeves come out, we wouldn't be hiding it. There's no need to try to hide garment construction details. Not quite sure what's going on with this collar, but who knows. Um, but these are pretty good. And again, uh, we get the back and front views and all of the construction details necessary. So before we get into a little bit more on construction, things like that, and again, I'm not going to go too heavily into it, let's dial it back and just go into the how do we create flats. So we should have a pretty good idea from the polo uh, that we did. But as you can see, it's going to be a little bit different because um, it's going to be black and white. And there's going to be some shadow details. So you see here, we have shading. Now it's really good, um, very important, to shade the inside of your flats. Um, and that's just for clarity. So see, we can see that the back is a little bit longer than the front here. However, if this was not shaded in, it might be confused with like a little inset or a little piece that's just on the end of the front. But because it's shaded, I know, okay, this is the back and the back is longer than the front. It's informing me about the construction. So in this aspect, um, the like the insides of garments that we can see, we can see it down here, we can see it inside the necks and things like that. It's very important to have it shaded for clarity. So we're going to be focusing more on, again, the more traditional flat, how to shade it, little tips and tricks about different details, um, and utilizing Illustrator. Now, Illustrator is by far um, the most utilized application in which to create fashion flats. Um, it's pretty much used by almost every company. Oh, here's a really nice example of the final garment and the flat. Let's look at that. It's pretty good. I don't know why there's lines here that could be very easily interpreted as like tucks or darts and we don't really want that. Um, here these the, the, the flares and things should be a little bit sort of rounder and bigger but overall it's not too bad doesn't seem like it's missing too much except for probably top stitch. I don't know how much top stitch there is on this. There's probably, if they used a blind stitch hem here and here, not too much. I can't really tell from the picture, um, but most likely we would see top stitch to finish here, here, on any kind of hem or anything that does need to be finished. Alrighty, anywho. So let's jump on over to Illustrator. And what we're going to do is it's really important to use a croquis. Um, so just like in your design sketches, we're going to use a croquis to make our flats. So I'm going to open it up instead of create a new garment. And we're going to open up um, Technical Croquis Large. And again, just like everything else, you can find this JPEG in the content folder in Blackboard for this week. And what we're going to do is it's a little small. small but we of course can um, size it. Just remember that when we're resizing things in Illustrator, to constrain the proportions, we hold shift. And this will make sure 
that when we make it bigger, it doesn't become too small, or I mean not too small, but too um, skinny or too fat, because again, um, uh, the proportions are really important for um, our flats, like we looked at that one where the proportions were all really weird and you'd make something, you know, that you weren't really into. Okay, so now that we have our image in here, I'm going to lock layer one and create a new layer, just like we did with the polo. So I'm basically tracing on top of our croquis, just like we would with a normal croquis. Um, now again, just like with the polo, we can um, show our rulers, which are under rulers, and we can use a guideline to sort of pull out. Now there's already a kind of halfway point line in the um, croquis template, so you don't necessarily need to do this. But again, since most garments are symmetrical, so both the same on the right half and the left half, we're only going to do half this drawing, right? Divide and conquer, um, or divide and copy. <laughs> um, you can also, if you like, throw up the grid. It can be helpful, but um, if you are going to throw up the grid, which you're probably going to want to do, is... Um, Sorry, go to Properties and reduce the opacity of your croquis template. That way, you'll be able to actually see the grid underneath. Okay, and this will help you sort of line things up and whatever else. Um, all up to you. If you don't want to use either of them, that's fine. Just make sure you do use the croquis. Um, but especially when starting off, it's nice to have a little bit of, you know, uh, training wheels, so to speak. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We have everything set up to start working. I have my layer two, my layer one locked, I have my grid, I have my guideline, I got everything I need. So what I'd like to do is I would like to draw with a black stroke and have an invisible fill. Right now, I, as I've opened it up, I have an invisible stroke and a black fill. So kind of the opposite of what I want. So I can actually just swap it here, but if it's not set up, remember we can double click, sorry, just or just click once and the box uh, that you want should be on top. So right now the fill's on top. If I click here, it'll pop the stroke. And if the fill is on top, just click the none, so the slash right here and this. You can double click and go to the color picker and pick black, or if a black swatch is up, which a lot of times it is because it's very common color to be used, you can just click on the swatch. So this is what I want. I want my black outline with an invisible fill. And again, I like using that invisible fill because I don't cover the croaky outline as I go. Okay? So let's zoom in and let's just make a very, very simple flat for, let's say, a little flare skirt, a little mini skirt. So I'm going to grab my pen tool. And again, I'm only going to do half. And let's start in the middle. And again, remember that flats are stylized. So we want to make it kind of as perfect as possible. And let's just say it's just a little flare skirt, so it's going to um, kick out like this, and then we're going to kind of round it off here, okay? Now remember in the properties, I can adjust my stroke and things, so it's good to have this up. Okay, so let's put a little bit of a hem on our... skirt and remember do not be afraid to zoom in it's so much easier to draw and draw accurately when you're zoomed in so we're going to do a little bit of that and since that's going to be top stitching I'm going to come over here to stroke click on stroke 
and then click on dashed line. And two points is pretty good. I mean, it really depends on how big your flat is. If it's, if it's really big, you're probably going to have a bigger um, point uh, dash for your top stitching. If it's smaller, you might have something even smaller. So, you know, just kind of, you know, use your best judgment. Um, does it read like top stitching? Uh, another thing that's going to help it read like top stitching is I'm going to lower the stroke down. So we get a, a little bit of a thinner line quality um, to our flat like that. Now, the last thing this probably needs is a waistband. So let's make a waistband. <laughs> now, um, our top stitching is still applied, but no worries because I can just go ahead and turn it off. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I have half, so I'm going to copy, I'm gonna um, use my black arrow, and I'm clicking and dragging, and you see everything is now in that box that I, I clicked down. So that's uh, a sort of multi-selection, a way to do multiple selections to click and drop down, and we're just going to reflect it the same way we reflected a lot of elements in our polo garment. Right click, go to arrange, I'm sorry, transform, reflect, and let's reflect a copy because of course we want the original side to stay in place. And I'm using the arrow keys now just to nudge it right into place. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to toggle the visibility off. And there's our front view of a simple skirt. Okay, pretty easy, right? Let's do the back. Let me get rid of my color guide. So remember that for the most part, our backs are gonna be a very similar shape to the front. So let's not do more work than we need to and simply copy and paste the front for the back. I'm going to use my hand tool just to shift it over. I don't necessarily need to put it on the back right now. I can put it pretty much anywhere I want. So let's put it right here. And I can't have exactly the same, for, if this was knit um, or stretched like a spandex, this would be fine, I could keep it like this, but let's assume that it's woven. And if it's woven, it needs a closure. So I'm going to put a seam in, a center back seam that goes all the way down through the waistband, because we need to open that waistband, down to the hem. Then to indicate a closure, which would be a zipper in this case, I'm going to put a little triangle right here. Now it's going to be hard to close it because it's going to want to delete that anchor point. So I'm just going to put that last anchor point a little ways away and then use my white arrow just to, to bring it back in. And another little line right down here at the full hip. Zippers have to go down to at least the full hip um, uh, to be able to function properly. And this is just going to indicate that this is the end of the zipper and this is the start of the zipper. And then what continues down is the rest of the um, center back seam. And there we go. Now we don't need any darts in back because it's a flare skirt. Um, and this would be our finished flat. Okay, we can look at it. Let's look at it without the croaky. Easy peasy, right? Um, so it gets a little bit more complicated, obviously, as your garments get a little bit more complicated. So let's make something that is a little bit more complicated. And again, start with a new layer. And we can get rid of my skirt just by toggling off the visibility. Okay, let's make a shirt. Grab out my guideline again. That guy just got lost on layer two, I guess. And um, let's, what are we gonna do? A little V-neck so we can 
start to see how we shade. So I'm going to make purposefully a lot of inside of the shirt being shown. So a deep V, and I think I might make the back longer than the front so we can get into some of those shading details. I'm going to also put in a few little shirring details too. Let's have a uh, like some tucks or shirring in the bodice. So I'm going to poof it out. Whenever you have tucks or shirring, you got to poof it out. And maybe something like this. And then we'll have this kind of maybe even like a little crop coming up here. And then let's put in, oops, didn't mean to erase that. Like maybe a center front seam. And remember, if you're kind of getting in the way, you want to like, it's going to erase it, just put the anchor point right next to it. And then when you're done, just grab your white arrow and you can nudge it into place. Let's make this a little floofier. Maybe a little, bring this out. So what I want to do is I'm going to put little tucks in here to, it, it, you know, a little shirring or just a little bit of fullness um, in the bust. Okay. And actually, I'm going to use another layer to do that so I can isolate easily my tucks from everything else. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and throw in a couple little loopy doops. Maybe a little, just a little line. Really depends on, you know, how full you want it. If these were really big sort of pleats or even tucks or whatever. Um, they'd be much longer and bigger, but this is just going to be kind of just a little bit. And let's maybe put them a little bit closer. Scoot it in. Oops. And I'm not going to do too much. Why? Because again, we're working in Illustrator, so I'm just going to copy and paste my little detail. And so it doesn't get too um, repetitive. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of reflect one. I already made a copy, so I don't need to do the copy. And I'm just going to kind of rotate and set in. Now I have this whole thing, so I can go ahead and copy and paste the whole thing. Oops. I want the whole thing. Thank you. So again, so you're not making, you know, little lines for the rest of your life. I'm just going to rotate and set it into place. Remember, we can even take individual ones, delete some if we don't need it. Okay, so right now this is looking okay, but what I want to do is I want to make it look a little bit more like shirring. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything um, by dragging out that box, and I'm going to go to properties. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to stroke and I'm going to adjust the um, line quality. For things like drapes or even darts sometimes um, and little shirring tucks and any kind of fabric fold or drape, I like to adjust the um, line quality. And I like it to be kind of thick at the base and thin at the tip. So let's try this. That looks actually pretty good. This is typically what I'll use. Um, but you can play around with different ones to see sort of what you like. This one's going to be pretty good. 
And then if you want it even sort of daintier, you can go ahead and reduce the stroke. I'm going to do it just a little bit because I want the thickness of that line quality to stay. So there we go. We got a little bit of shirring and we can do some final adjustments. Maybe this little guy needs to be a little bit more like this. So now we have shirring. We got our little tucks right here at the base um, of our bust. Fantastic. We can go ahead and move on. Just make sure that when you do move on, you're working on the right layer, first of all. I want to go back to my basics. And um, you're back to the line quality that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to uniform and go back to just our standard line. And again, remember, you can always just change it on the way. Now let's do um, well, a little, maybe a little sleeve. Um, and let's do, I want to overload with, um, let's do like a, a, has a little bit of a bell sleeve to it. Let's make this straight. And if this is poofing out, I'm, I'm automatically going to start kicking out my sleeve farther um, because, of course, I want the shape, the full shape of the sleeve to be shown. And then maybe let's do a little bit of a, a drape on that or a pleat. I want to show lots of different sort of techniques. And let's say there's like a bit of uh, uh, pleats right in here. So what I'm going to do like a pleated little ruffle right in here. Pleats will come right up here. come down and open up in like a little V. And we can just keep going on like this. Trying to keep them even. Again, you can always, this is not so far, but if it was, you can just copy and, and paste one. It's actually even better because then you get it nice and even. Okay, now you'll notice I'm getting this big point here. Well, I can fix that and stroke as well um, uh, with my corners. I can miter the corners off so I don't get that weird point. Okay, so um, one more thing that I want to do, I want to go ahead and um, put a little bit of a line in here. I want to make these a little bit more fine. Um, I want to keep the outline thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my scissors tool and just isolate these little V's that are coming up. That way I can change their property. So watch this. I'm going to grab my black arrow. One, hold shift, two, three. So holding shift is our multiple selection. And then here I'm going to do the same thing where I just go ahead and lower my point value for the stroke and it's going to make it look a little bit finer. I can go even more than that if I want actually. Let's just see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks nice. Now while we're in that smaller I'm going to do the backs of the pleat. Now these are specifically box pleats. There's different types of pleats. And I'm going to set it in. I want there to be a, a difference. I might even set them up a little bit more. Yeah. I want there to be a difference between this bottom hem and, oops, I don't want all that. I just want you. because that's going to give it depth, okay? Now we have a little bit of messiness, which you're always going to find when you zoom in, but 
And it's good to try to clean that up as much as possible. So let's go ahead. So when we cut it, we need to maybe adjust our these guys a little bit. Maybe this needs to be out a little bit because I don't want too much choppiness in the lines. Again, a lot of that kind of goes away when you um, zoom out. But it's good to be specific because sometimes what you're going to do is um, enlarge the flats and then once it becomes larger you can see all these little you know choppy bits that you don't want so there we go there's some pleats some box pleats uh, let's finish up with like I said I want this to come up so I want a let's say like a back I'll be a little bit almost like a tail. Now this is very fitted here so we're probably, I'm going to assume that this is woven of course, so I'm going to put in a little bit of a princess seam dart right here. And let's put in, I want a high neckline for the back, so we'll maybe let's get it down a little bit but not too much. Okie dokie. Um, now let's go ahead and put in our top stitching. Well, let's just correct. So this guy and this guy still have a smaller. Let's put that up to one. We can leave the seam here as a smaller. Uh, it's nice to have, um, when people do utilize different line qualities and flats, they typically leave the outline shape as a thicker and sometimes the inner ones like seams or darts or top stitching or things like that um, as a uh, different line quality. Now I'm going to assume that there is a princess seam on the back too, so let's go ahead and put a princess seam on the back. Now you don't need to match the princess seam uh, on the croquis exactly, it's just there as sort of a guide. Um, it's fine if you don't, but let's go ahead and let's bring that down since it is a seam. Okay. And I guess we're going to do a back zip on this. So this is woven, so we need a closure. The most likely closure we would see on this is probably some sort of button placket, but I'm just going to put a zipper in the back. But before I do, and before I go on to the back, I'm going to go ahead and do some top stitching. So the neck is going to need top stitching because it probably has a facing or something to finish it. So let's put a little there. And let's put some on the hem. Let's finish up with the neck first, though. It's on the front neck. It's definitely on the back neck. Now that got a little high, but remember, don't get frustrated if it's not coming out the way you want because Illustrator is made for making mistakes, and we can always go back, we can always fix, we can always delete. That's what makes it so much better than making flats by pen. Pen, you're not allowed mistakes at all. And let's bring this down here. And there we go. Maybe just kick that, this guy out a little bit. Okay, so now what we have is we have this uh, lovely flat, so let's go ahead, let's uh, finish off at least the front view. I'm going to select all of it, but ooh, ooh, let's double check because I don't have my little, my little guys in there. So I'm going to unlock layer four, and then now I do. Let's transform this by reflecting it. And use the arrow keys to slide it on into place. Boop. Now I'm just going to check for little gaps and things. And it's easiest to do that with our croquis off. If there are little gaps, just grab your white arrow and 
close the gap. Now, like I said, there's going to be a little less obvious than the skirt, but don't do too much work. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this for the back. Let's bring it. I'll just, I like to put my, the back views just a little ways up. Whatever you do is fine. You're going to find your own style. It's just almost, you know, um, habit for me to go ahead and throw up uh, the back view just to the right and a little bit above. But again, you're going to do your own style. There's no set rule for where the back view should go in relation to the front view. Um, the only rule I would say is to place the back view close to the front view. Um, uh, for this assignment, it might be uh, kind of obvious, but you know, when you're doing a whole collection of a whole bunch of them, you might be tempted to put the back views kind of far away. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and cut out and delete any front view shapes that um, aren't going to be relevant for the back. So these little tucks and shirts, they're all going to go away. I probably shouldn't have even copied them to begin with. I could have easily locked the layer again and just copied and pasted without them. But here I am now selecting all these little doodads. Uh, just to delete them. Now some of these items uh, uh, or elements are going to be on the front and the back. So we need to isolate them by cutting them. So um, for instance, I don't want this front of the neck because that, of course, is on the front view. So I'm going to cut these elements away that are not part of the outline. All right, same thing on the back. I always like to highlight my line before cutting because sometimes the scissors tool can be kind of particular. All right. I also don't need this. need any of these guys. Okay? Now, um, there's some details that I don't have, like I need to continue my princess seam up. Depending on where it is, maybe we have a, a seam going in back here. Actually, let's do that first. Let's say it goes across here. Maybe kind of angles down a little bit. Then let's bring this guy up. And I can go and draw on the same thing, or I can delete and reflect. I always kind of go on the uh, uh, air on the side of reflecting, because then it always is perfectly symmetrical. All right, like I said, we're gonna need a um, zipper in the back, so let's just throw one in. And I am gonna need this detail here. I don't need the full pull and everything, but I do need that just to show it. On the 
back, we're going to see the full zipper pull. And it's got to go through the waist. So the waist is the narrow part. So we need to open up the, the narrow part. So um, we can actually make this fully separating. Okay, so I'm not going to put an end to it. So we'll go all the way down and separate down here. You can also, um, it's important sometimes to add little additional notes to your flat, just in case there might be anything confusing at all about the construction. Because again, that's what we want to do. We want to make the construction as clear as possible. So if this wasn't super clear that this was a fully separating zipper, I'm going to go ahead and write that in the notes. Make a note. So we could make a little text box note. Careful because Neither Photoshop nor Illustrator has spell check. Oh my goodness. You're going to actually have to know how to spell. If it's a lot of text, what I do is I write it out in, in Word or something that does have spell checks and then copy and paste it into um, Illustrator. I'm just going to use a simple line tool because I just want this. And then if we remember... Let's give that a nice black stroke. Um, if we go to stroke, stroke also has the um, ability to put a little arrow. Let's put on, oh, wrong way. I want one down here. That was kind of big though. Let's find a smaller one. There we go. So we can add little notes like that, and again, making sure that it is clear. Okay, so let's uh, double check what this looks like. Okay, so we have now um, a nice flat, um, and the only thing left to do is to shade the insides here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, and any shadow work you do should be done sort of on a new layer. And what I'm going to do, again, locking the previous layers. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to outline the areas that I want in shadow. Okay? And so I'm just going to outline using my existing drawing. Okay, we got those little spikes. So remember how we got rid of those little spikes? That's right, it's in stroke. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that area and I'm going to fill it with a nice gray. I keep it kind of dark because it's going to lighten up with the next step. Now you say, oh no, well, that's fine, but all my details are getting lost. Well, we're going to come over here to Opacity and just drop down the Opacity. And that way, we're going to get this nice shadow shape um, without losing any of our detail. And do the same thing down here. You can kind of see why I like to have an invisible fill while I'm drawing. Otherwise, as you can see, it gets covered, which is not the best. Again, if you do kind of make a mistake, again, don't worry, don't freak out. You can always fix your mistakes in Illustrator. Illustrator is super forgiving. 
Okay, here we are. All you've got to do is lower the opacity. Now what you can do too, if the black line, your black outline isn't really matching up the way you want it to, you can always put it to invisible. And let's grab this guy. This is pumping out a little bit over here, so let's just fix that. And remember, if it's getting tricky for you, just zoom in. There we are. Oh, <laughs> make sure you make the opacity the same, so remember the number, because see how it's a little bit like darker on top? You want to make it the same. There we go. Okay, so let's look at this nice and finished. There we are. And if you want to see it nice and cleaner, we can uh, go ahead, hide the grid, hide the guides. And there's our finished flat. Okay, so um, I'm going to show maybe a couple other techniques, um, but you should have a kind of a good idea right now. And again, um, you're going to make these as complicated as need be. Hopefully you're going to do something a little bit more complicated than that first skirt. Um, but, but again, you know, everyone is going to take to this a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Many of you may already have Illustrator experience. So, you know, take this opportunity to really kind of push yourself. If not, if you're kind of struggling in that pen tool, oh man, let me tell you, I, I, I feel you when I first learned uh, Illustrator, I hated that pen tool. The curves would not curve the way I wanted to. Oh, it was so frustrating, but trust me, trust me, just stick with it and eventually you get used to it. And um, I mean, I can draw, I can draw fabulous flats by hand. I would never want to, oh my goodness, never want to, um, especially not professionally. Um, it will become your best friend for flats. Um, so just just hang in there, just hang in there. But if you wanna curse out your computer, go, feel free. <laughs> so uh, one other thing while I'm sitting here on uh, finished flats, I wanna try just a couple other techniques for some other garment details and, and things and tips and tricks. Um, what you can do also to sort of jazz your uh, flats up is to create a drop shadow. Um, this is something that is 100% not necessary. It's just snazzy looking. Um, so, you know, it's, it's probably, if I was at a company and like at, under a deadline, I would not bother with creating drop flats uh, or drop shadows for my flats. However, since it is just simply snazzy, um, it's a really great for a portfolio. It kind of really expresses, hey, I'm good with Illustrator. I can make these sort of attractive things. I, I'm even good enough for the bells and the whistles. Um, so again, I would sort of recommend it for a portfolio. Um, but again, it's, prob it's not a practical thing um, to do uh, under a deadline when you have hundreds of flats to create. So what I'm going to do to create this drop shadow is I'm going to create a new layer, lock all my other layers, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a full outline of my garment. And remember, luckily I only have to do it once because it's the same front and back. So let's zoom in. And I'm just going to go ahead and I definitely want to be able to see through it, so I'm going to make sure my fill is invisible at this point. And I'm just going to make a quick outline. That's going to be the silhouette. And if this gets a little wiggly, don't worry, it's not that big of a deal. Like right here, I'm not even going to bother too much with the little insets.
Boop. Okay, so there we are. Um, and this will be good for the front and the back again because we have the same shape. And let's grab my hand tool because it went all crazy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with white. And this is going to serve as sort of a background, otherwise my um, shadow um, would be see-through because this is all see-through, right? Um, now what I'm going to also do now is I'm going to control copy and control paste. So, oops, sorry. If that happens, that means the whole thing was not fully selected. So just go back, deselect, and then reselect with your black arrow copy and paste and I'm gonna put this guy just down and to the right it doesn't really matter you can do either side I'm gonna do down and to the right of my original one and this guy gets a gray mm, give him a little lighter gray gray in fill and in stroke and to fill both I just clicked and dragged and dropped the color into the stroke okay now while this guy is still hide it highlighted I'm gonna go to effect blur and I like a nice Gaussian blur maybe because it sounds pretty Gaussian um, okay we'll test this out and sometimes it doesn't give you too much of a preview so it's hard to tell whether you're doing it enough. So let's start at, I don't know, 23.5 pixels and hit OK. Oh, there we are. Preview, that's too much. Get something that looks like a nice little shadow. It's gonna soften the edges there. That looks pretty good. OK. Now what I want to do is I want to sit this guy underneath my white. So because they're on the same layer, I'm going to right click, go to Arrange, and I'm going to send it back. Okay? Now I'm going to take this whole layer and drop it underneath my flat. And let's deselect so you can see what it looks like. And there we are. There's a little bit of white here. So um, there's a couple things I can do to um, uh, fix that. The quick fixes is I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to fill the stroke with invisible. And that did pretty good. You can also adjust the stroke size. So um, there we are. And I can pop back to my layer six and just drag this down, copy both those things, paste it, and drop it in for the back as well. So let me zoom out so you get a better idea. So again, are drop shadows necessary? No, not at all. It's not adding anything to the construction detail. Does it look kind of neat and make your flats pop out? Yeah, it does. Um, and since flats are kind of so ubiquitous, there's a sort of sta professional standard, um, you know, little tiny things to make yours stand out against the competition, especially in your portfolio, can be really good. Um, so like I said, you know, something like this, it's a neat trick. It is not necessary to a functioning um, and accurate flat, but you know, at early stages in your career when you're, you know, wanting to build the best and snazziest and most eye-catching portfolio possible, uh, it's best not to, you know, uh, forego on the bells and the whistles. Okay. Um, what else do I want to show you? Uh, we're going to wrap it up. I know we've been doing this for a little while, but, um, you know, flats are very important and this is going to be the bulk of, you know, how we're going to look at flats in Illustrator. Um, the last thing I really want to mention, um, let me just get to another layer and let's get back here and I'm going to just toggle these guys off for now. Um, the last trick I really want to sort of show you is just to use everything to your advantage. So before we looked here, a lot of, um, I was, oh, here we are. Um, a lot of people I see like have trouble with like the collar on a suit jacket, like the lapel and the collar bit. 
So if, you know, anything is like looking wonky or being weird, try to find a nice image of it. Um, I do not mean for you to find an entire garment to trace. I want the flat assignment to be your own design, your own creation. Um, but, you know, there's only so uh, many, you know, we can only be so unique and so inventive. Typically, oh my god, it's taking forever, but anyways, let's copy it. Um, I don't know if I have to wait for it to load. I think I do. Yeah, I do. Um, but if there's certain elements of your garment, which very likely there's going to be, is this a, just my internet sucking, or is this, oh, it's really, really high res. Let's find something a little, there we go. I'll just copy the thumbnail. Um, so again, if there's, you know, just some sort of detail. Come on, come on. There we are. Um, find it. Copy and paste or click and drag the image into Illustrator should be holding shift to size it proportionately and you can kind of if you want to get it even a little bit better reduce the opacity and then you can see your croaky behind it and see how it's fitting on the croaky a little bit smaller And now what we can do is we can lock the layer and work on top of it. So I don't have to struggle through trying to figure out what a lapel should look like. I can go ahead and simply draw my lapel based on, let's do this. Just tracing. And again, zoom in if it's tricky. Don't be afraid to zoom in. Get a little bit of that nice little curve there. Oops. I'll leave that for now because, well. fix those points. So again, I don't even have to think about how to draw it. And again, you know, um, this is going to give me the basic shape, but of course, you know, if I want to make this lapel a little bit snazzier, I can. I can do whatever I want to it. Even adjust it from here. Play around with it. You know, so this is even like, it's a good design tool because you can play around with these different ideas. You can literally grab onto your lapel and look for different solutions that you might like. Um, uh, instead of having to draw it again and again and again and again. So again, utilize it the best that you can. And here again, then we would just do the rest of the collar. And again, where it gets wonky, we go back and we fix. We don't worry, we just fix. bit of sort of facing. And we have the pleat or a center back seam, typically a pleat too in the uh, lining there, but we'll just put a center back seam. Uh, and then we just go off on. So again, um, 
if things seem hard or you're, or you're not able to draw very well, um, cheat. <laughs> Find a good, uh, you know, uh, um, image of what you want uh, and then go ahead and, and use that. And of course we can still change it um, and it makes everything just really, really easy to draw and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, be sure to peruse the handout on flats as well because it goes uh, a lot more into depth into, you know, uh, what you need to have for your construction uh, on your flats. And it's really good to start thinking about that. Um, designers understand the construction needs of clothing. It's a necessary thing for designers to know. Um, you know, basic things like, um, am I going to be able to actually wear this garment? Um, are the zippers um, long enough or in the right places? Um, is the closure good enough? Um, because of course, we can make beautiful, beautiful garments, but if you can't put them on, it kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, same thing with, you know, are you going to get the right shape with the right construction? Should I be using tucks here? Are tucks going to give me the right shape? Um, are, you know, especially for woven fabrics, um, all the shape from woven fabrics, because they have no stretch, need to come from seaming or darts. So are those seaming and darts in the right place to get the shape that I want? Is it going to fit the way I want it to? Is it going to look the way I want it to? Um, so all of these things are important to start thinking about, and you can read a lot more about that in the handout, the flat, um, drawing flats handout. Um, that you can find in this week's content. So please do, um, you know, look through that and especially just, you know, there's lots of different sections on pants and skirts and shirts. So if you're doing a shirt, just flip through the shirt part. If you're doing pants, flip through the pants part. Um, just so you know, you're, you're not going totally in the woods um, construction wise. All right, guys, I hope this was uh, informative. It certainly was long. Um, oh, not too bad. Just a little over an hour. Um, but again, I really cannot emphasis, emphasize enough how important being able to draw flats in Illustrator is in the fashion industry. Um, it is it, a ubiquitous requirement for almost every entry-level job into the fashion industry. Um, way more than your uh, design sketches, way more than anything else. Um, I could probably get a job tomorrow with a portfolio full of just Illustrator flats and nothing else. I know maybe it's a little bit sad, <laughs> but again, they're so important. Without a flat, the garment does not get made. Um, it doesn't get made from the design sketch. Uh, it only gets made from that flat. Um, it can get made from a sample garment too, but again, then you have to make a whole garment instead of just draw a picture um, before the production, which is very difficult. Um, well, not maybe not difficult, but more difficult and more time consuming. Anyways, um, again, as always, there's a lot, probably gonna be a lot of questions on this because you're all gonna be doing your own individual flats. So um, please don't hesitate with those questions. Keep them coming. Um, and good luck and have fun. All right. Bye-bye, guys.